Today we're going to be doing a two-tone finish. We're going to paint the base of this with DIY White Swan and then the top is going to get stripped down and stained with real stain. To get started, I'm opening the top. I don't want to get paint on this right here because it never leaves a very straight line. So if you open it, you can get to painting it. And this is one of those pieces where I'm going to paint all the sides. So once I paint these three sides, I'll put this down and I'll paint the back. It doesn't have a key, although originally it probably would have had one. It's a lane chest, so you probably could order a key. I don't know. The cedar's in great shape. When I'm all done painting and it's dry, we'll distress it and seal it. And when that's dry, Zeb will strip the top and we'll stain this top. So I'm using my one and a quarter inch Paint Pixie brush and I'm using DIY in White Swan. You can pick both of these up at jamierayvintage.com. The DIY paint is a clay based and it requires little to no prep. This piece was not shiny, so all I did was clean it and now I'm painting it. If it was super shiny, I would probably go ahead and lightly sand it, but it wasn't and this is gonna grip really good and it's not, the sides of it aren't gonna see as much use as like a top wood, so. The nice thing about the clay based paint is that it's heavily pigmented, so I really like to use it when I'm painting white because I don't have to do a million coats. I'll do two coats, distress it, maybe do a glaze or a wax, seal it, good to go. It's also all natural and it doesn't stink up my house. It smells kind of like pottery. All right, so we're just going in with coat two. Once I get this coat on, I'll touch up anywhere where I feel needs some touch up, and then we'll be ready for distress. I've got my random orbital sander. We brought the cedar chest out into the garage. I'm gonna sand that top all the way down. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper, and then once that's all the way down through the finish, then we're gonna stain it with some real stain. Okay, so you can see right here, I've gotten all the way down to the wood. Right here, I've got a little bit of shadow where the stain is left. If I don't get that all the way off, the real stain is water-based. It's not like your traditional stain, and it won't penetrate down through that finish, and I'll get an uneven finish. So as I was sanding this down, I was like, man, that's awfully light for cedar. Well, guess what? The old folks down at Lane, this is cedar in here, what they've done is they did a veneer with pine on the top and I got it a little thin in a couple spots. I was about halfway done and I was like, oh, well, maybe I better go light. I'm a little sad because I wanted to try the real stain on cedar because I hadn't used it on cedar before, but it'll look cool on this pine too. I'm going to finish it off just some quick passes with some 120 grit to kind of smooth out any squiggles or rust spots and then we'll hit it with the stain. All right, I've got real stain number two here, and I have determined that this is pine. And I'm just gonna put it on here and then I'll, I'll uh, even it out, same way Jamie does with the paint. It doesn't take a whole lot. If you wanna put second coats, if you want it darker than this, you just wait about 15, 20 minutes for it to dry. Once it's dry, you put that next coat on and it'll just keep darkening up. But what this is gonna do, it's gonna give us a real nice, natural looking gray tone to this and kind of give it that aged look. See where I, before I realized I was dealing with a veneer, so I'm probably gonna have to do two coats on these spots here. Or do a whitewash on the top. That sometimes happens when we go through veneers. We'll see what Jamie thinks when she sees it. I bet you we whitewash it. Maybe not though. Sometimes she's just like, meh, makes it look old. All right, we're back to sanding. The top is almost dry. The real stain's almost dry. It's been about 15, 20 minutes. I've got 220 on the random orbital again. And this is gonna give us a softer distress than like a heavier sandpaper would. And hopefully I just get down through the paint and just barely kind of kissing the wood underneath. I don't want to go too far down and change the shape of any of my details, hence the 220 crit. So 
So you can see right here, the 220 enabled me to kind of slowly work up to how much distress I wanted. I didn't want a real heavy distress in some of the areas where it wouldn't normally have wear. So I just kind of lightly hit it on the big flat surfaces like right here. And then here on the edges, you can see I pretty much have distress across the whole piece. So I'm going to make a whitewash. I'm using DIY paint and white swan. You could also make a whitewash with the milk paint or the chalk paint that we carry. This is just what I have on hand and I used for the rest of the piece. I'm going to put about four parts water to one part paint and make the wash. Just eyeballing it. Yeah, that doesn't have to be super accurate. Yeah, it doesn't have to be exact. You just want it watered down. And then I'm going to take my fork and mix this up. Now we're going to use our brush and we're going to go whitewash. I'm covering up this damage that's right here. And this whitewash blends well with the real stain because the real stain is water-based. And it's not really damage, it's just where Zeb sanded a little bit through the veneer. Once I get it mostly everywhere, I'm just going to take this rag and go over this. Damp so it's starting to take off a little bit of it, so be careful. Just go soft. If you go too hard with a damp rag, it's going to pull all the wash off. I'm just coming back and adding a little bit more wash in the areas that we're trying to cover up here. All right, the wash is dried on the top. I've got Sweet Pickens top coat and I'm using the three inch Wooster foam brush. I'll put the link in the description for you so you can find it real easy. I'm gonna do three coats on the top because more likely than not, people will sit on this. Kids are gonna be standing on it, jumping on it. I want it to be real nice and durable. And I'll do two coats on the bottom. That way it holds up for a long time. One coat's sufficient. It's wipeable at one coat, but cedar chests get beat up. So we'll do kids, kids sitting on them, banging their feet on them. It happens. Okay, so I got it all on there. Now I'm just gonna go back and smooth out. We do this with pretty much every product. You get your medium on there and then you smooth it out so that you have minimal brush strokes or none at all with this foam brush, pretty much none usually. I've got it in a separate container so I don't contaminate my whole gallon just in case I've got some white dust or something in that I didn't wipe off of the piece. So. Just like on the top, just getting it on here, and then I'll smooth it out. We are glad that this is finished. I went with a really classic design. We used DIY White Swan because it has great coverage. It only took two coats. If you weren't distressing, you'd probably do three. It also, um, sand is really smooth. Zep did a great job on that. And then the top, he thought it was pine, or thought it was solid cedar. <laughs> Turns out it was pine veneer, but that's okay. There was a good uh, way for us to show you another technique. So we used real stain number two. All real stain is on sale. And it's normally 39 down to 29 until Saturday the 7th. Did we decide that's what the day is? Saturday the 7th? Yeah, 7th. Uh, 2018, I'm just putting a date in case you're watching this later. But anyways, it's a great stain. You can keep it in your fridge for up to, like I would say two to four weeks. It is all natural, so keep it in your fridge. Also, the, the pigments will settle. Zeb didn't talk about this, but be sure if you're working on a large project, shake it while you're working on it, so that way the, the pigments don't settle to the bottom. And then the whitewash you can do with any brand of paint that we carry. We used White Swan because that's what we had out. And it matches the base. Yeah, works out good, four to one, and it hides all of the little uh, sanding sins, as it were. <laughs> and a lot of times when you're working on a project and you're, you're new, you might sand a little too far or have a dent or ding or this or that, the other thing. And whitewash is a really great way to get a good farmhouse look and cover that up. You don't have to be new. I thought this thing was <laughs> solid wood. I just was going for it. I told you that it wasn't. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so DIY White Swan. We used real stain and then we did the wash. It's sealed with Sweet Pickens Top Coat. We used the Paint Pixie Brush. You can get all of those at jamierayvintage.com. We use the Wooster brush to seal it with. Zeb will put the link below. Yep, it'll be down there. And you can create this look at home. If you've got questions about a project you're working on, 
ask below. Also, just a little tip, if you've got a cedar chest and it's boring, throw an applique on there. This already had one, but we also carry those at jamierayvintage.com and you can take something plain and make it look beautiful. Make sure you hit that notifications button, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. This project was really fun. I got this from my neighbor Clarissa. She messaged, uh, or she posted on Facebook saying that she had a chest that was, she was getting rid of. Zeb told me not to get anything else, but you it was only across the street. It was all right. And I it mean, didn't need any repair. It's totally normal for me to just walk across the street with furniture. Yeah, it happens in our neighborhood a lot. They know if it's, you know, old furniture, just let the raise down. Yeah, people don't go to the dump in our furniture. They just.